All right, so it is going to be the Hunter coming out here. And Hunter, although it has, you know, received some nerfs, the Unleash and Helm change, this was always the stuff of nightmares for me playing Shaman Man. This is, I played so much Shaman Man against Hunter, and I was very sad 90% of the time after yeah. having played it. There's just, I mean, does he have any Earth Ring Far Series or anything? I don't think he does. Traditionally, Shamans have no way to heal. And that's one of the, the kind of problems. I mean, just, and you're also, your hero power is really working against you, which un with Unleash, it's like, if you constantly hero power, you're, you're setting up these crazy unleashes. Right. If you don't, you're not getting a lot of value. Traditionally, shamans have like a lot of kind of smaller minions. They don't have these massive, powerful taunts. And it can be, it can be a very, very tough matchup. It is winnable, um, especially more so now with the Unleash the Hounds change. But it's definitely tough. And I think we're probably just going to see coin animal companion. There's two major things to touch on in this as well. Is that now that, Hunt, that Unleash the Hounds has been nerfed, it took a lot of the play potential away from these mid-range hunters mm -hmm. that were relying on the utility of Unleash being two mana. Mm -hmm. Despite that, Nimsh has chosen to go, on, to go with this mid-range hunter. Nice. So uh, something that I want to, I guess, point out here is, is I was talking to oh, wow. Draconix about how he felt against the Shaman versus this mid-range hunter matchup. And he believes that Shaman actually has an advantage versus the mid-range matchup. Oh, really? Which I thought was really interesting. Even the, the, the 2P Europe versus China qualifier, he continued to queue up Shaman time after time, and he ended up going 5-2 with it. Okay, so wow. uh, he played against Hunter a lot, and, and it was putting a lot of pressure on this. Iron Man out on the healing totem. That seems really strange to me, as opposed to he just a steady shot or his animal companion early. Right. I mean, if he had gotten a Huffer last turn, that's already eight damage that he has done this turn. Right. Like, so one one of the things he wants weird. when he does this, what he's looking at is that the fact that again this mid range deck is seeded in needing cards like um, Houndmaster to get a lot of value out of them mm -hmm. and push forward through the game. So now at this point, Kit Kats has two minions on the board he needs to deal with. Yeah. So no matter what, going into Nimsh's turn four, he's going to get value out of this Houndmaster if he wants, yeah. or he can keep his options open. Because this isn't so much of a damage race as it is uh, just sort of a, a consistent pressure build. Oh, and there's the Houndmaster. Speak of the devil. But I think an even better play is because your opponent just hexed his frog, is I actually like Tundra Rhino here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like a very strong play. Um, you're both, both pretty legitimate. Looks like he is going to be... Oh, uh, wait, I forgot that frog was a beast. Ignore yeah. what I said. Yeah. So that is... <laughs> this is actually a pretty terrible position now if you're Kit Kats. If you don't roll high on this Lightning Storm, you're going to find yourself in a pretty brutal position Well, you can really totem fast. first and, 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 uh, right. and pray, pray to the Lord. Both that that Earthshock, I think, is going to change this game a lot because so now he's going to Earthshock just... this, this uh, frog. Okay. Or ignore what I said. I thought he was going to Earthshock and Chilling Eddie. He's hoping he rolls high on this totem. So, wow, he rolls high on one of them. That's big. Earthshock's going to clean up the board now. He doesn't have access to Fire Elemental next turn, but he does have access to Hex and he does have access to Chilwin Yeti. So, I imagine Nimsh feels really safe behind this Tundra Rhino because this Savannah High Main, we've already seen a Hex and an Earthshock come out now. Mm -hmm. I think he believes that this Savannah High Main is going to put a lot of pressure on him. And it is going to, but it, this is showing you what this mid range deck is based off of. The, the hero power is something that's inconsequential almost. Because so many times you find yourself just wanting to develop your board. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. This Savannah High Man is gonna be devastating against Kit Kats, because he has a hex, but we're already using four points of health off of this Savannah High Man. It's already done the job at this point. So now it's yep. killing a Yeti and it's pulling a card out of your hand. And now you don't really have a answer for the next Savannah High Man if it finds itself to the board. Yeah, definitely pretty brutal. And Deadly Shot's still sitting in hand, Kill Command's still sitting in hand. A lot of ways to deal with this. I mean, you drop the Fire Ellie, Fire Ellie's just gonna get Kill Commanded. Um, I mean, there's no really great way to deal with this. And it looks like he just wants to go Yeti. Um, okay, so is he, he's gonna hex up and go for the Yeti. But at the same time, this can just get Kill Commanded or Deadly Shot. There's, yeah, this you know, is a brutal position to be into because this frog is pulling a ton of weight right now yeah. because this Yeti's next attack has to be directed at this frog or he mm -hmm. has to use a card for it. Yep. So. The Savannah High Main's already done its job. It's killed a Yeti. Now it's done a second job. It's pulled a Hex. Now this Hex is going to be doing so much work protecting all of his small minions from this. Nimsh has found himself in a huge position on the back of this turn two Iron Beak Owl on a healing totem. So do you, do you prefer just going face completely here, using saving Kill Command for the face and stuff, or do you keep clearing? Because I feel like he's in a pretty strong position also having the deadly shot. I feel like Kill Commanding the Yeti makes a lot of sense, but I mean, it is, okay, so he wants the deadly shot. Yeah, I like deadly shotting here because, because totems are going to be on the board. Yeah. So and he wants to save this kill command for the base, yeah. or potentially for a fire elemental as well. Yeah. So I actually wouldn't mind seeing a timber wolf come down here. Okay. Because uh, this is going to be three extra points of damage from this timber wolf now, because it has charge because of this tundra rhino. Yep. So the lightning storm is gone from Trick Cats' deck. Nimsh doesn't know he's only got one copy, but we do. When you look at these lists, and now this is an extremely uncomfortable position if you're Kit Kats because these flame tongue totems are not doing a lot of work. 
That Rock Fighter is, it's not a thrilling draw to have at this moment. And the Fire Elemental Especially is good. Especially with the Kill Command in hand as well. This is getting pretty rough. Right. I actually wouldn't mind seeing a Leroy Jenkins this turn. Okay. Followed by an Unleash and just use that kind of pressure to clear the board down. Be interesting to see if he does go for that then. Um, and I mean, he is you know, hovering around that side of the, the, the cards at least. Uh, we'll see where his mouse does end up going. You know, taking a little bit of time to think this through. Something here. to note here: if Unleash the Hounds was two mana, oh, he'd be is. able to follow with a Kill Command as well. Yeah. That would just be the, a, an extremely brutal turn. But you know, sort of as I was touching on, I think it's hard to not play Leroy Jenkins here. This is such a great spot for it. This frog is protecting your entire board. You're going to be able to clear out your opponent's entire board, and, and you're getting in six points of damage from Leroy already. So he's done his job. Unleash the Hounds is now getting value from it, and he's got a second Unleash the Hounds and Kill Command to back this up. So. A lot of damage is going to find its way to the face. And again, he doesn't have a second copy of Lightning Storm. Both of his hexes are gone. And Rockbiter is his three-minute answer. But this is a terrible position. Wow, he's actually just going to go for the face. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, man. That puts him at lethal. He has, yeah. he's, so he's no matter what, he's got lethal next turn. Shot. Right. And so, he has the boar, so next turn he's dead. Yeah, so and, that fantastic play here yeah. from Nimsh, of course. Recognizing that this is effectively lethal, there's no way Kit Kat steals 30 damage here. It's yeah. basically impossible to do. So e even if you were looking at Doomhammer double Rockbiter, that's 16 points of damage, and then six more from the Fire Elemental, that's 22, and then one more from this well, it's 23 damage. Yeah, and that's, so that's this is a completely ideal. safe play to make, and a testament to sort of his, when we were talking about his aggressive style, really pays off here, because he's able to deliver so much damage and then put himself in a position to win with no threat of lethal from his opponent. Yeah, and I mean, uh, this is, it, it's brutal. It's. He is going to obviously taunt up, and he, he doesn't know that he's dead just yet, but um, obviously Kill Command and Steady Shot is just going to ignore that, and he can't clear all the beasts, and even if he could, there's still another beast to, uh, to finish him off. So either way, this is going to be uh, this game going here to Nimsh. It's going to be tied up, but a rough, uh, rough situation there for him, and you know, we talked about it. It's the hero power kind of works against you. You know, that Stone Claw Totem giving him an extra one. Uh, the four, uh, four Hound Unleash going to secure it. Here comes the Kill Command, and that is going to be that as that is the game, man. So 1-1, one, one. and now the Shaman deck is gone, the Hunter is out as Kit Kats. Uh, do you go Rogue here or do you go back to the Warrior? I think here, Warrior is built well enough to be able to fight against this Hunter deck okay. because he's anticipated Hunter coming into it. So I have a lot of insight into his deck building because at the time that he designed this particular Warrior deck, I was still his teammate. So we still play test together a little bit, but.